Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome to Parrot's uh, YouTube live stream. Today, what we are going to talk about is how to work in a remote environment, especially, especially with our current situation. How can we teach more than one classroom or give a seminar to more than one location from one device? But where everybody can see and where everybody can hear what the educator or person giving the seminar is saying. The software package that I'm talking about is called MedSupport for School. Now, basically what MedSupport for School allows you to do is it has a tutor console, which is basically the main console, and then it's got student consoles, which you can then add to different devices. Now, to create this scenario, what we want to do is teacher A is in classroom A, but she has to teach B, C, and D. Now, how do we do that? Other than laying long cables and projectors and so forth to actually get that right. So what the software allows us to do is on a localized network. So, meaning uh, everybody's on the same network, everybody's got the same IP ranges. Now I can install my net support on my tutor device and then on the sub devices. Now from my tutor device, I can then work, show my screen use the whiteboard, share content, and actually work with my students in the other rooms. Now, obviously, you'll have to have somebody in the other rooms to just check that the kids are all right and not uh, creating havoc over there, but you can at least get the information across. So you can have 10 students per classroom, four or five classrooms, and one teacher actually giving their lesson to all of those students. Now, I will be using our interactive touch LED panel for this demonstration, and for the scenario of the demonstration going through to another three or four of these touch LEDs. You can use projectors and projector screens or even our interactive uh, whiteboards. What I have at the bottom here also is two tablets, one Android tablet and one Windows tablet, which is already connected to my classroom. Now, to quickly get back to the next board, open it up over there. Now, as you can see, it is a, a nice, easy layout for people to understand. And of course, training will be provided should you go for the solution. It is also license based to explain how that works is if you've got 29 students, you would have to take 30 licenses because it includes the teacher. For our remote classroom learning, we're aiming at five to six licenses. So that means you've got one teacher and five devices. Automatically link up to what your teacher is trying to do over there. Let's just minimize that. Apologies for that. Um, so, to illustrate what I mean there, if I double click on that one, I can have a look and see exactly what's going on on, let's say, my Windows tablet at the bottom here. From a teacher's point of view, what this allows me to do is see what they are busy with, what my students are busy with. Um, are they on Google? Are they actually following on their digital textbooks of what I am saying? I've got full control over that device then. So I can actually close applications, open applications, and annotate for them. So let's quickly go to my annotation tool. I can select it over there. My pen, let's select a color. And now I can say, student A, this is what we are currently discussing. Now this is to the individual device. So in our scenario, this would be classroom B, C, or D that I can work with. Let's quickly close that down over there. And they will all be listed like this one over here. Now, with an Android tablet, I can view what they are doing. And I can actually work with them. But unfortunately, with the limitations to Android and Mac, um, I do not have full abilities like I do in Windows because there are permissions and rights that need to be modified. From an IT perspective, your IT technicians that need to install or set up this uh, configuration it is actually quite easy. All that they need to do is run the EXE, select tutor or student, depending on which device you will be working with, and then, of course, allocate the room name, and from there, it's all automatic. There is also a tool that is uh, that you can broadcast this, so it will pick up all of the PCs on your network, and you can remotely install net support on all of the devices. So that eliminates the fact that you have to walk to each and every single device to install separately. So you can, from a central deployment, do an installation for a whole school or a whole scenario that they can speed up the time there. 
Now, to go through some of the functions and functionality that this software allows you to do, uh, let's quickly go over here. My second screen there is very similar to my first screen, but now just by selecting it, it will give me an overview of what's going on on that screen. Let's go down here. If I move to my audio tab, from my audio tab, I can now listen in to what they're actually listening to. I can communicate with them via the announcement. So if I open up my tab over here, you'll notice here at the top of my audio, which I can say talk and listen with this PC, audio off, talk to the PC, or just listen. Now what this allows me to do is if your students have headphones on or in your separate classrooms, I can communicate with that classroom separately. If it does have a microphone installed, if I listen to it, I can actually hear what the class is trying to tell me. So I can possibly answer the questions, but for what we're aiming for, the teachers overlooking or overseeing the classrooms can then take the notes and the teacher that is actually giving the lesson will then go around afterwards and answer those questions. But the functionality is there so that you can communicate both ways. Also, what you will notice here in the console is a chat. I can start a group chat which is all of the classrooms or all of the student devices and create a forum where we can chat. Or if a student is too shy to actually ask the question in the main chat room, they can individually chat with the educator. So if it is a silly question that they think, which there aren't any of those, then of course they can chat individually with the educator. Let's close that over there. Then from here, I can also do file transfers. So if I've got a, a Word document or Excel sheet that I would like to only share with student A or with everybody, I can go to the file transfer and I can send that to those uh, locations. Let's close that one over there. <clears throat> now that is what the audio side of things allows me to do. At the bottom here, I can actually select a whole group and I can say listen to all of them, which will be chaotic because you've got four or five classrooms with kids in them. And then, of course, I can change the volumes. I can switch off their mics. I can switch off their headphones for audio from this console. So it is empowering the, the educator or the person giving this seminar to actually control devices without having to have intervention in the other classrooms. Another nice feature that the software brings up is my pop quizzes. So I can quickly do a quick survey. How are you feeling today? Is your temperature higher than 37 degrees? And it will pop up on all the devices where they can then answer and I can have a summarized version of what is actually going on in the classrooms. And this can be added to what they call a journal. And for your student devices or the additional devices, you can journal everything and it has a record of everything that you've done. So homework or possibly class interactions Everything will be saved in there. To move on to the next tab is my internet tab. So <laughs> what we have is obviously an open internet if you don't have a proper IT company. From this console, I can approve websites and I can restrict websites. So let's say, for instance, we don't want our kids to sit on Facebook during the whole class. I can restrict the Facebook website. And the moment one of the students or one of the devices tries to connect to Facebook, it will pop up here on my screen and actually tell me that student or that device is trying to connect to Facebook. So you've got full control over what your students are allowed to do during your lesson. And of course, at the bottom here, I can say unrestricted, restrict all, so they can't access the internet whatsoever. And then, of course, I can block FTP sites for downloads. Moving on to our next one over here is applications. So if I am in my classroom only using Google Classrooms or Teams or uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, I can say those are approved applications. And should they try and open any other application, it will block them and notify the tutor immediately so that you can also check what they're busy with. From printing, if you've got a network printer set up, obviously you can say which is your default printer and students go through you as the printing queue. And as the teacher, you can then say, yes, print this, print that, don't print that. Let's not waste paper. So you've got full control over all of this functionality as the tutor. Then, of course, the other fun part here is USB drives and CD-ROMs. Now, we're in an era now where CD-ROMs are started, slowly starting to phase out. But I can control the USB ports. So if they quickly think they're going to bring a game in, 
plug in the USB, you can restrict and block that as well. One that uh, we found that uh, tutors and educators do like is the word restrictions. So I can add target words. So I've got a, a paragraph that they need to type. And in that paragraph, as a teacher, I want certain words. I can then say those are my target words, and I can say which are inappropriate words. So, for instance, swearing. In any application that they have open, Word, Excel, whatever they type on their keyboard will be listed and monitored through this section over here. So, for, from a teacher's perspective, let's say uh, tablet, if tablet's typing and they've got all of the target words that I want, it's easy to mark them. If they've got inappropriate words, obviously they get an F and they fail. Yeah, <clears throat> wonderful. And last but not least, one of the functions that they have here is the whiteboard. Now, what is the purpose of all of these tools if they cannot see what I am doing? So let's quickly go and select over here. Let's select all of the devices there and say show. Now, what this allows me to do is I can show my desktop to the students taking me out of my tutor console and giving me my normal Windows desktop. So now I can open up any one of my software packages that I want. I'm just going to use our Teach Infinity for this demonstration. And then of course I can now work in my Teach Infinity. And all of my student devices, just to give you an idea, just going to lift this device over here, can see what is on my screen. Yeah. So this is how you would remotely then work with your students in the other classrooms. Okay. And of course, you're not limited just to one certain aspect of software. You can actually work with any software, your Word, your Excel, your electronic ebooks, your educational books. You can even open up YouTube, Let's go over there, and you can play videos for them. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so you can play videos for them and annotate over that, giving them more content while you are working from one location. Now, I just want to reiterate this. This all works on a local network. So it is not the fact of a teacher is in the classroom and they are teaching the students that are at home. It needs to be in a localized network. Okay, let's quickly go back over here. Now, to go in my show, I just go to the little play button over there and say, end show. It'll take me back to my tutor console and all of my students will now have their desktops back with them so that they can continue working. So what this is, is it can actually assist you in giving your lesson and then they need to do their revision or possibly do uh, their homework or a quick quiz on what you have just uh, taught them over there. Now to explain the top one over here, I can create a full student register. So instead of me asking as an educator, is student A, B, C or D here? If they sign into my classroom, I can see exactly who is present and who is not. Now, with all of the functionality, even with the Teach Infinity that uh, comes with our solutions, you can record full sessions. So, for those students that are not here, you can then uh, send this video to them. Then they can actually watch and listen to your whole lesson that you have taught. Then, of course, like I explained, you've got the journal, which is an overall view of what they've done. They can attach documents to it. They can show their work. And as a teacher, you can then go through those journals and actually mark their work. But for the remote learning that we are currently working with, that is based on your individual devices, but we want to project and teach more than one classroom. Then, of course, I can blank out all of their screens, so that if they've got individual devices. So you are not limited to only the five screens in the five classrooms. Should your kids have tablets or have devices provided by the school, you as an IT technician or educator can install it on those devices. And then they can, instead of watching in front of the classroom, they can watch it on their tablets or laptops that are actually in front of them. Then of course, I've got the power on, power off reboot. I can switch off any device that I would like from here. Um, there is the help request that I spoke about earlier where you can actually chat individually to your teacher or you can chat in a group forum. My student desktops got full control over here to switch their desktops, to uh, open up their start menus. I can from here start ap applications on their devices. Um, and then of course, if we move on to the lesson plans, I can create full lesson plans as an educator. So should I not be in the classroom and I'm linking up my laptop that I will be doing the lesson off of, I can create a full lesson plan. And the next day, bring it in 
and just start my lesson plan in my classroom. And then, of course, we've got the tutor assistant, which is a separate device that should the, tu the tutor get overwhelmed, or the people sitting in the classroom uh, watch, um, watching the kids, they can actually go on as a tutor assistant, and they can also communicate with the tutor directly. Yeah. So the layout itself is very easy to use. The setup is very easy to do. And then, of course, <clears throat> the teaching side of things is very easy to do. Um, I can change it to a different mode, should you not like all of those buttons. You'll notice it does bring it down to a smaller amount of tools that you can utilize. And of course, depending on the scenario or the situation that you're in, you will not use all of these tools, but the functionality of actually teaching more than one remote location. Yeah. Let's quickly just show you how you can manage your classrooms. You'll notice here, I've got new class. Now I can add all of my different classrooms in here. What this allows me to do is Biology 101, Science 101, uh, Maths, English, uh, Zulu, Sutu. All of that you can add as a classroom. And as the students rotate, they will then just change their classroom. Um, if you are going for the scenario of one teacher teaching more than one classroom, you can just change those classes. And all, everything that you've done there will then create those student registers for you so that you know who is there and who is not. And of course, by configuring it, I can say who the educator is um, and what the lesson plan is on. Uh, let's open that one and say, right, I'm going to start with it. You'll notice it tries to find all of my computers in my room that I've created. There it tells me to register the users, and there's all my devices back again. So it is very easy to connect again, so it is not something that you have to set up every time. Once it is set up once, as those devices connect to those classrooms, it will automatically just pick up. Let me just go back to my intermediate mode over there. And of course, feedback and well-being is a very important part of what we currently have. So instead of having to go to each and every single student, I can just send out a quick feedback and well-being question. Uh, let's quickly do that. Uh, okay. <clears throat> now, it will ask me to send that to whichever students it is. I think this one is the one in our training room, so it's not here at the moment. Then they can respond by happy face or sad face or uh, maybe face. Now, with that, you can also save that. And then, of course, at the end of the lesson, review that. And you can actually send the information through to, let's say, a principal if they need to know how the kids are doing today. With the send and collect work option that you have here, if your students have their own devices, instead of giving them homework on paper, you can actually send the work via the NetSupport school. Then they have it on their PCs, and once they are complete, come back tomorrow, they can send the work back to you as a teacher, where you can then mark or score their work that they've done. Now, you can attach any documents, like, for instance, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, images, videos, you can attach all of that, and it will build a whole criteria of what you are actually busy with. But to come back to the main reason why we actually are demonstrating the software, with the rules and social distancing, you are not allowed to be within 1.5 meters of each other, and we know classrooms are not that big. So this uh, software package is a wireless package that you don't need cables with. You can obviously go the cable route, but this being a wireless solution, you can actually add more devices than you need, more devices that you need to a network system. So you can go up to 10, 15, 20 classrooms that you can teach from one location. You can even set it up in the hall, and you can train in the hall to all of the different locations in a school scenario, if we're actually thinking about that. So the software package itself, like I said, is license-based. For any queries on the pricing, and should you be interested in it, please do not hesitate to uh, email us uh, for support on pi.support at pari.co.za, and the other one is sales at pari.co.za. And somebody, a, a technician or a, a assistant, will get back to you with pricing. And then, of course, you, we have the chat on the side of our YouTube channel. If you've got any questions there, please log in, and we will get back to you with an answer of how we can assist you with our solution. Yeah. Like I said, you do not necessarily need a touch device. You can do it from a PC, but the reason why we have the touch device, like we're doing now, we've got our webcam set up, you've got your screen over there, then you can actually broadcast even better to it. Then the people can see you as the educator as well. 
But you can connect it to projectors. You can connect it, like I said, to our interactive whiteboards with the projectors, the LED screens, and then, of course, work with the keyboard and the mouse as well. I hope that this session was uh, successful and that you are interested um, in how you can actually teach remotely without going for thousands of cables and all of that. All you need is a local network and a bit of IT um, assistance to install it on the devices and you can then teach from one location through to multiple locations. For any queries, like I said, please do email us and thank you very much for your time.